I don't I understand that, dude. This one guy is just eating, uh, like, yeah. ghost peppers full on just for fun. He's like 20 of them. Every shot right now is a big shot. The snow's finally melting and the courses are starting to open back up, but none of them are open at 11.30 at night. So we are back at Harrisburg Golf Simulator for the main event on the channel so far. I challenge my buddy Dane to a friendly match on the back nine of TPC Scottsdale. Stipulations are one mulligan each, and I'm giving Dane four strokes on the four hardest holes. Plus, I'm gonna play from the back tees, and I'm gonna give him about 70 yards on every hole. From the very first fairway, Dane applies the pressure with a wedge to 17 yeah. feet. Uh huh. I mean, I might be in a little bit of trouble. All I can do is to get up and down and hope for a half, which I narrowly escape with. Dane is a pretty good player, and he's only going to get better. Giving him four strokes and damn near 70 yards off the tee on every hole should be too much. But I wanted a challenge I know I needed to rise to meet. The ego lies heavy on these shoulders. Here on two though, Dane struggled. And we all have holes like this. But finding a way to turn this hole into just a bogey is the next step for Dane and for all of us. After his second, something needs to click that a five needs to be the highest number he can fathom taking. Eliminating these big numbers is crucial to good scores. Good. Then again, I had to roll my ball through a bunker, hit a mediocre pitch, and hole a 15 footer to make my par. Still, there are levels, that's why he's getting four strokes. My game overall though has been really good here lately. But one thing I consistently struggle on is the one-shotters, the par threes. Long have they been my bugaboos since the first time I stepped on the golf course. After watching Dane's ball sail for a perfectly safe space on the green, I admit I was jelly. And again, another mediocre chip I've been practicing so much fails to give me the 10-foot gimme putt. And after Dane nestles his up appropriately, I have to make this. Fifteen footers for par will make you go bald. Trust me, I know. But once I saw this putt fly by the hole, but straight up the line, I went in on the mulligan early. And boy did it pay off. When you only get one, you gotta make it count. Even at a 70 yard disadvantage, I still back myself in this match on the par fives. My longer clubs are my strengths. This is why I'm able to play 7,000 yard courses with relative ease. It's not that I'm super long. I don't think any of my drives went over 275 yards but I'm fairly consistent from 190 yards and out. And you'll see what I do with the six iron with everything on the line later.
but after two shots Dane would rather forget. He puts a brilliant move on this wedge and puts all the pressure right back on me as he's stroking. I need to get up and down from 54 yards. Which I do to eight feet. Give me birdie and we're dancing. But Dane rises to the challenge immensely, walking in his birdie for a net eagle. Game on. I knew this would be tough, but it might be tougher than I thought. Dane should be teeing off first here, but the simulation does what it wants. Just wait till they take over. And for the second hole running, Dane is stroking. Two decent tee balls see it come down to the approach. But on this occasion, I think the length on the hole gets to me. 245 yards in on a par 4 is not going to make a lot of birdies. I crawl this up to the front edge of the green which I do get up and down on, but none of it matters when Dane steps up from 166 yards and stuffs it well inside the gimme range for his second net eagle in a row. Game way on. I'm down in the match and even the simulation now knows it. But again, on the par fives, I have to make hay. There's no other way of winning this match if I don't take care of business on the par fives. But with a green like 15s of TPC Scottsdale, you'd be a fool to go for it from 286 yards. I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way. And now that Dane's in a similar position, it's a wedge off. That slowly becomes a putt off. And the side saddle magic strikes for the third time today. I love this thing. Oh, baby. Woo! Every shot right now is a big shot. This is the uh, stadium hole. The analysis says it all as I am not happy with my short irons. I've missed a lot of greens with them. And after just climbing right back in front, this wasn't the shot I wanted to see. But Dane put himself in the worst spot, although he makes a wonderful recovery. where I fail to get it inside the 10 foot gimme range again from greenside. And I'm forced to accept my first two putt on the round, seven holes in, an incredible stat. Neither of us really looked at the hole. We both know the course and we know where we are. 
We didn't really look and see the water was right there and he was only 252 yards. Dane definitely brought all that water into play. I tried to get him to play as Mulligan, but he's still only lying to greenside. After prudently laying up, I need to stuff this wedge to bring the game back to level going into the last. And you guys, that is one of my best wedges under the most pressure in recent memory. I needed that. That will definitely work. Woo! Yeah, you gotta make it to tie. Well, no, well, no, you wouldn't win. You wouldn't win that. No, because you gotta make it to tie. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, because you just referred it. If Dane yeah, hold that chip, then there was nothing I could do. But to make a par from out of bounds off the tee is always a cheat code. Sadly, he activated that shit after I was already in the hole for three. So. And as I told you, it's all coming down to the last hole, all square. A hole where Dane gets a stroke. I did not miss a fairway. I hit all seven of them. That is another incredible stat. But Dane's drive tells me I need to make some magic happen. I have to make fairy. I should say it one more. Do you remember that six iron I was talking about? Big time shot. But Dane responds with a quality shot of his own. Everything that happened after, though, I'm not so sure about. Bring it all back. So we're playing one one Wait, mulligan. So if I yeah, so I might as well take this mulligan. You could take the mulligan on the putt, or you could take it from the back and try to make. I can't. I'm afraid to waste that shot, dude. Like I don't want to redo that. Like I'm happy. I want to redo. I think I kind of want to. I would do. I would do it right here. Yeah. And on the putt. I don't see myself missing it, but it's a big base. <sighs> More. Make it for the win, miss it, and we tie. Uh, uh, if I make this putt, I win. If you make it, you yeah, win. No, if give you... me a mulligan with my wedge. I want it. Like, oh, you, you want the wedge? Yeah, I gotta put it. I gotta give me, get it in with you. Give me range to win like that. That's not enough this time. No, All right, that's fine. No, no, I'll come back now. Not long. Yeah, there's a there. Uh, with the 12 footer. This is fine. Now you got 45 feet for yeah. the dub. Got it. You gotta get down into. Yeah. Maybe Dane's just being a gentleman and letting me win on my own channel. Giving me handouts. Maybe Dane's ego is half as big as mine. I would want to stuff that wedge in there too and ride away on a white stallion butt naked. But when you got two putts from 12 feet for the match, you take two putts from 12 feet and win the match. You don't go back to the fairway. But you live and you learn. One thing I do know though, Dane will be back. And Dane will be hungry. The next one's already planned. I just hope it lives up to the hype. As always guys, thanks for watching.